Welcome to Whiskey Nightcaps, the channel where we do sip before sleep. And I am your host, Jason Davis. Welcome to Whiskey Nightcaps, the channel where we do sip before sleep. And I am your host, Jason Davis. And today we are back at you again with George Dickel Right Now, before we get into the proceedings, there's just a couple of things I want to just put out there. The promotion to get the cask strength or barrel proof sample pack from yours truly the doors are closing soon you at least need to get your foot in the ankle or toe something before it closes and shuts completely on your behind okay don't let the doorknob hit you with a good lord split you april 30th is the last day to enter into this promotion and if you win you will get a sample pack of cash strength whiskeys that I have personally here shipped to the destination of your choice. You can't beat it. It's free whiskey. What's your problem? The other thing I want to do is, you know, you guys take the time out of your day, not only to watch these videos, but also, also to drop a few comments to help the algorithms find me because you know why. But somebody did tell me the algorithms are no longer hating on your boy, so I won't say it this time, but, but I'll transfer it to you telepathically. All right, so let's read a few of those comments that you guys have taken time to put out there. Jerry Hopkins commented, uh, in response to my Balconis video, what I like about Balconis is they are innovative, like using blue corn, Texas scrub oak instead of peat for their unique smoky flavor profile, all locally sourced in Texas. I haven't tried all of their products, but my favorite so far is their Texas Single Malt Balconis One, uh, which won Best Glass at the World Whiskey Festival in London when it was introduced. Also Brimstone, something very different. And my favorite, Mirador Asian French Oak. I look forward to your reviews and future reviews. I look forward to those future reviews, but thank you for watching. And like I got told that gentleman, my favorite Balconis right now to date is the American single malt rum cask finish. It's like 62%. That thing is awesome. Mike D commented in response to the Wild Turkey 101 versus the Maker's Mark 101. I have and enjoy both. I have both and enjoy them. You're completely right about the Wild Turkey 101 with a solid product that's six to eight years old and I can get it where I live for about 28 to 29 bucks. The Makers 2 is a hitter for me. Such a smooth sipper. I had some right after a scotch last night and the taste by comparison was soft, excuse me, and sweet. I heard the barrel proof is great too. Great review and cheers. Cheers to you, my friend. And that barrel proof is awesome. You can believe that. My man, my homeboy, Sean Dent. Okay, after further review and taking a dive into Makers 101, this stuff is super sweet and viscous. You're totally right. The proofs are similar. But if you're a rye lover, you might gravitate towards Wild Turkey 101, like myself. But if you're a weeder like me and like the sweeter profile without the rye spice, you might prefer the Makers 101. It's all opinion, right? Whiskey is as whiskey does. Pete Mitchell, he said this was in response to uh, my white dog video. He said there's closer to 18 mash bills at Buffalo Trace. I say I was much more committed and I'm just a sipper. Adding water was just a rookie mistake. You add water to your mouth and sip the whiskey. You also fail to rub it in your palms and do the white dog trick. You did real, zero research and have zero knowledge. Somebody's been watching the documentary Neat. Plagiarism. All right, so without further ado, let's talk about this whiskey that we have here before us in the quintessential green labeled whiskey bottle, which people do associate with rye, but it all, does not always mean that it's rye. Now, George Dickel is a huge, huge brand, huge household name, so I won't go into the history of that because I'm sure you guys already know. Uh, the most important thing here is that George Dickel is a Tennessee whiskey, and that's what intrigued me about this bottle. One day I was in the liquor store and I was broke, but you know how sometimes you just wanna buy something even though you don't have the money to. So I said, well, what can I get for like 25 bucks? And I saw this. So on the side uh, of this bottle, you can't see right now, but it says that it went through the same uh, maple charcoal filter process, that Lincoln County process 
that all other Tennessee whiskeys uh, go through. And so I thought that was interesting for a rye and what that could do to that profile. Now this is 45% ABV, so it's not the, the weakest whiskey. It's not at that 40% watered down uh, that some people just tend to stay away from, but it's also not at that cask strength or bell strength offering ABV. This is chill filtered, how that affects taste. We really don't know. Some people swear that chill filtration uh, will remove fats and things of that nature that does affect the taste. And they want this raw, like old dirty bastard. Ooh, baby, I like it raw. Now there are a few different mash bills that are widely used when it comes to rye whiskeys. And this is a 95.5, so 95% rye, 5% barley. All right, so let's go into the nose. I have with me my new Glen Karen. This is my snifter that has the neat little top that I love because it, it definitely does hold in the vapors. Uh, sometimes prevents, like if you leave something overnight, will prevent it from evaporating. All right, let's see what we have here. The rye force is strong with this one. It almost has an, an astringent kind of smell to it. Whoa, yeah, that, that's there. Like I said, it's a 95.5, so I, I wouldn't expect too much depth uh, or layers to the profile. It's heavy on like the pine, that rye pine scent. There was something fruity. There was definitely something fruity there that was kind of like a wisp, uh, and then it quickly went away. It's very light, and what I mean by that is you don't get the heat on the nose it's like a, a cool day, almost like it already has a block of ice in it. Yeah, there's definitely a, a fruitiness on there, and I think you know now that some of the vapors have been allowed to escape, it's, it's a like a pineapple kind of smell, but still some of that astringent cleaner is in there as well. Like I said, not a lot of layers. This is not the onion of whiskeys. All right, but let's go into the palate. Let's see what we can extract from this thing or if there is anything to extract. Before we get into the palate, the question here is that can this be a good introductory rye for somebody that either has not experimented with rye or that is just getting into whiskey? I find, and this is my personal opinion and feel free to disagree if you, if you wish, that rye is the most divisive of all the subcategories of whiskey. Either people really love rye or they hate it. The spice of rye, uh, what we do know is that there's no whiskey uh, more American than rye. It was probably the, the first whiskey that was distilled here on these shores. Even George Washington made rye, okay? They still make rye whiskey, but it's expensive as hell and I'm not paying for it. All right, so let's see. Let's see if this can pass the test and if it is, in fact, a good introductory rye. And the reason why I'm, I'm stuck on that introductory title is because it is 45%, and I do like my rides with just a little bit more kick, maybe around the 50% mark. Let's go. It's not bad, not bad at all. Um, it has a sweet quality to it which I, I would assume has been lent to this whiskey by that maple charcoal filtration process because, you know, I've, I've had some other 95.5s and, you know, even some 100% rise that really don't have this sweet note to it. It has a, a natural sweet flavor to it, like a honey. You know, when you, you know how like you don't want to use sugar sometimes in your oatmeal or something like that, so use honey. It's like that, definitely get that rye spice punch, even though it's only 45%, but not too much of a burn. The burn is there, the hug is there. Um, so you won't be disappointed in that regard if that's what you're looking for in your whiskey and especially in your rye. The sweetness is still in my mouth, but on the finish there was a metallic type of taste on the back, but that, that sweetness is lingering. Uh, and the, the 
spiciness of the rye has dissipated at this point. Let's put my skull cap back on, let this sit for a second, and then we'll go back in for a second go round and see if we can pull out something else or if it's just uh, a one hit wonder, you know, like Tone Loke or uh, who, who's the guy that sings that song, Bust a Move? I don't know, I can't, oh, uh, uh, oh, it almost came to me. Something MC, I get, but everybody was called Something MC back in those days. Young MC, I got it. Is it, is it a one hit wonder like Young MC? We will see after this commercial break. No, we can't. We can't kill people on camera for likes. So that, that was last week. We gotta move on to something else. Okay, let's, let's get back to the show. Oh, oh, hey, hey guys. All right, listen. Second go round for this whiskey. Let's see what we got here. Let's take off the little scully, the skull cap. This little hat, little beanie. Jesus Christ, who the f is calling me? Work never stops. But anyway. Let's get back into this here whiskey because we are off the clock. It's got a little bit softer there, a little bit of vanilla coming through. I assume that's from the wood because the only other grain is the barley. All right, let's sip this sucker. Okay, that was just a sip of cayenne pepper. Uh, <laughs> that, was, that was just a sip of spice. I didn't get the the sweet note that I got on the first go round, which is okay, you know, because again, I like rye. So the spiciness does not bother me. I eat spicy food all the time. Sounded like Kanye right there. I'm waiting, <laughs> but, but I'm not really getting anything else. Man, I feel like a, a news reporter that got to the scene too late. Nothing to report here. All right, so what is the final say, the final take on this here whiskey. Is it bad? No. Is it great? Is it awesome? No, this is not one of those whiskeys that makes you want to just walk into your mom's house and smack her, okay? It is, it is a good whiskey for the price, which again, like I said, I'm gonna say because the markets vary between 20 to 30. I got it for like, I think it was $24 maybe, you know? So for $24 is a 45% rye that has been maple charcoal filtered a value? Yes, uh, especially if you have other more expensive bottles and you wanna slow down the pace of drinking those, you can switch off to this one and be perfectly fine. Is this a good, introductory whiskey for someone who typically does not like rye or is just getting into whiskey, no, 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 no. You need a rye that has some type of corn in the mash bill uh, that will lend some of that sweetness uh, to the whiskey to make it more palatable for that type of person because ah, this is, is spicy. All right, man, the question is, have you tried this rye before? Do you like rye? Do you like rye whiskey? Because if you don't, I am on a mission to convert you, okay? The Crusades will start and we will travel from country to country and convert you over to a rye drinker if necessary. But if you do like rye, have you had this rye? Tell me what your thoughts are. Remember again, the promotion is closing. This train is taking off without you. You're just gonna be running with your ticket in your hand trying to get on. It's not happening. Anyway, whiskey nightcaps out. I hope you have some whiskey in your hand.